Hey guys, Brian Beeler here coming to you from the Storage View Lab. We've got something a little different for you this time. Intel's got some news out today about reaching 10 million units shipped of these guys. These are the QLC drives, the H10 and the 660P. Now we did recently review the 665P, but the volume of those units doesn't really add a whole lot to the 10 million, although that'll certainly help them get to the 20 million target. We uh, have a podcast this week, and we have a 10-minute interview we did with Intel that we're putting in the podcast. We're going to drop that in here in this video so you can get a feel for what Intel's doing with QLC, the importance they think QLC holds in the client computing space, and then we'll talk a little bit about the future of QLC and what's coming down the line from Intel. So go ahead and join in with us as we listen into this interview. Joining us today on the podcast, we have David Lundell, who is the Director of Client SSD Strategic Planning and Product Marketing at Intel Corporation. Well, that's a mouthful, but thank you, David, for joining us and welcome. Thank you for having me. I appreciate the discussion. Yeah, we've been working with, with you guys at Intel on the SSD front for what feels like about a decade, and it probably is, um, all the way back to those early X25 drives and all sorts of other things in between. And most recently, uh, the 665P we did a review on, which uh, is a, a great little drive for mainstream systems. Uh, that's based on QLC NAND, and you've got some momentum around your success with QLC thus far. Why don't you give us the update there? Yeah, so uh, we introduced uh, QLC uh, in the first product, uh, Intel 660P, back uh, about a year and a half ago, 2018. And we followed up with the Intel Optane Memory H10, which combines the performance of our Optane technology plus the storage capability of QLC drives back in April of last year. And, and the combination of those two products, uh, plus, as you mentioned, the 665P that we launched in November of last year, uh, we shipped over 10 million units of uh, QLC drives in the last year and a half. And we think that's a big accomplishment because it's a big step for the industry. The industry started with one bit per cell and then moved on to two bits per cell. And then right now the bulk of the industry is shipping on three bits per cell. And each step in technology is, is a big leap for the industry. And we at Intel have taken that leap and it's now proven out by us being in high volume manufacturing and shipping uh, 10 million drives across the industry. Yeah, I mean, 10 million drives is is quite a bit. I know you have this infographic that that shows them stacked up on or end to end for the to give people a visual. What what do you have there? Yeah, it's pretty impressive. Uh, you don't really 10 million units. Is it a small amount, large amount? It's hard to visualize. But if you <laughs> put them end to end, you have over 62 Empire State Buildings stacked on top of each other. Uh, which is a, just a phenomenal amount. It's over 14 miles tall. I think that's and, uh, quite a, quite, quite I think that's drives. begging for a, uh, a YouTube video where we glue them together and actually make a <laughs> Empire State Building <laughs> SSD end to end. So I I know yeah. I know you guys are excited about QLC. Uh, when you think about the two product lines you have, the H and the P drives. How do you think about them from a differentiation standpoint? Uh, obviously, the 660, 665 is a little bit lower cost, more mainstream computing, but just tell me how you guys visualize it. Our 660p, 665p products are great for a mainstream user, and we provide them in capacities from 512 to 2 terabytes, so they're really at a, a great capacity where people can store their photos and personal information and have a great experience. We created the Intel Optane Memory H10 product by combining the QLC capability for a large amount of storage with Optane technology, which really accelerates applications and delivers really high end responsiveness for users who are multicasters, maybe doing content creation, gaming. It, it's a more for a high end type application. And so we differentiate them that way. And in this industry, there's been a relentless move of hard drive, fewer and fewer hard drives being shipped in PCs, and we believe that this QLC technology will help in that area as well. So people that are buying hard drives yesterday, today will buy a QLC SSD. Yeah, and it's 
I mean, we're still thinking about hard drives and talking about hard drives. It's surprising to me that, that that's even still a choice for a number of reasons, right? There's the uh, design issue. So, you know, notebook guys, Dell, Lenovo, whoever, I can't imagine they want to keep making a bunch of SKUs with that two and a half inch drive uh, load bay versus the M.2s. And then there's also the cost thing where they want to have the latest technology in their systems. But, you know, something like the 665P lets them get those price points down where maybe the, the hard drive just isn't even comparable anymore. Is What are you guys hearing from your, your systems partners? Yeah, absolutely. We um, hear from them that they uh, appreciate the smaller size. The reliability is a big one. Uh, hard drives notoriously have risk when they're since they, move, they have moving components when people move them around. Uh, so reliability, cost, and power is a big one. Mm -hmm. uh, with uh, with a SSD, you can reduce the footprint, which allows for a bigger battery, but also SSDs just consume less power. So that means more power for other things like graphics and uh, displays and things like that. So. So really, our customers are very excited about this trend and embracing it. And year over year, each one of our customers is shipping more and more SSDs in their PCs as we go forward. Yeah, those lines are, are certainly crossing and, and uh, SSD acceleration is, is there. You know, it's funny because the, you know, we've got a performance angle and people will say about the QLC drives, well, they're not as performant and, and all this other thing. And and we actually changed our testing methodology on, on QLC drives to just stress a little bit less of the drive. So we're staying like on the 660 or the 665P, staying inside that, that SLC cache. And, and I think that's the thing that sometimes as we're technical audience loses track of is what is the need of that buyer at certain price points where they need enough performance, but they don't need all the performance is that a struggle for you guys as you think about what 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 targets you want to hit with these drives or how to tune them for the, the sort of the triangle of price performance and uh, capacity how do you how do you guys think about that absolutely and it definitely takes compromises uh in different directions and, and we try to target different products to different segments so and you're absolutely right uh the bulk of PCs are shipped in the, uh, you know, somewhere between the $500 and $7 system price point range. And somebody who's buying in that range is budget conscious, and they aren't necessarily looking for the highest performance graphics card, maybe the highest resolution screen, sure. the backlit keyboard, you know, those are folks that are just want a good uh, solid PC to get their day in and day out job done. So, so this kind of a product is tuned for that kind of customer. We definitely were focused on that type of customer when we built these drives, the 660P and the 665P. When we built the Intel Octane Memory H10, we were more thinking about people who are multitasking and uh, driving types of workloads into the storage device that really need responsiveness, and uh, they can tell the difference. And so that's where we target that one more towards the uh, uh, premium systems, which we would, at Intel would say are you know, $800 plus. Right. So I know we've talked a little bit about system design before. Uh, one of the things I'm curious about just from an architecture standpoint is when does the 80 millimeter, the 2280 M.2 form factor start to become a limiting issue in notebook design where they're asking you to cram those down? I know there's other steppings of the, uh, of the form factor there. Yeah, that's a great question. The the industry is always looking for a smaller form factor uh, for the storage devices, and that discussion is actually happening within the industry right now. And it'll be a transition period, but the devices that really need the smaller form factor are ones that are battery limited. Uh, they want to have a bigger battery, uh, you know, say 13 inches and below screen size, things like that, that uh, don't have a big space for a motherboard or a battery right now. And this would help them to uh, either reduce the size of the motherboard or fit more components on the motherboard. So you'll see it start with some of the smaller form factors first and then start to grow to uh, larger form factors over time. But it is a very important consideration the industry is looking at. 
All right, so last thing before we go, I, I can't let you leave without asking about the future. And I know you don't want to tell me about the H15 yet or whatever's next there with Optane because those aren't announced. But what can you tell us about what to expect out of out of Intel or QLC or, or anything else uh, more broadly? Yeah, so as we look forward, uh, as we talked about earlier, we've already announced our 96-layer uh, QLC SSD, the 665P, uh, just a couple months ago. And as we look towards the end of the year, we've got 144 layers coming. And basically what that means is we'll be able to even put more bits into a per unit square area, which again will help with uh, cost reduction and even further penetration of SSDs into the PC segment. So, and we will be pairing that as you talked about there with Optane technology. So we'll be delivering the next uh, level of uh, performance and power reduction and with that product as well. Um, uh, as we get towards the end of the year and into 21. So we have a lot of exciting, innovative technology, and we see a great roadmap ahead of us. All right. Go forward. Well, that's fantastic. I uh, really appreciate you joining the podcast today. A lot of great information, and uh, we certainly appreciate it. Thanks for your time. Yeah, and thank you for having me. And a you know, big shout-out to the rest of Intel that helps make all this technology possible. It was a, took a huge team. So I uh, appreciate their efforts, and uh, appreciate you taking interest in this. Yeah, it's not a one-man show, is it? Yeah, absolutely not. <laughs> yeah, there's at least three guys at Intel. It's, it's not a problem. <laughs> All right. Thanks yeah, again. Exactly. All right. Thank you very much.